If you want your transactions to be extra fast, you better set up your RPC on MetaMask. Alright, enough of that. Uh, if you're watching this video today, then you are curious about how to make your MetaMask a little bit better, a little bit faster, a little bit more reliable, have a little bit more visibility, all of these amazing, super awesome benefits. Uh, why? Well, you know, maybe you're an NFT trader and you are sending transactions through your, your wallet because you want to buy into the awesome Cool Cats project or whatever it is. And your transactions are not going through. They're stuck in pending or, you know, you're trying to check Etherscan, but they're not even showing up. You know, you might also be curious about how do I alert on my transactions? Like, let's say I send a transaction to buy an NFT and I want to be notified in my Slack channel when that purchase goes through so that other people on my team on my NFT investment team can know about it and then do something with that information. There's all this stuff that you can do because all this information is public, but uh, the way that MetaMask is set up by default um, is not really the most optimal all the time. So I did some investigation and I made this video for you guys to uh, learn how to set that up. Cool, so today what we're gonna be going through is how do I change my MetaMask node provider? Um, and uh, just some background, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming if you click on this video, you've seen MetaMask. I'm just gonna pull it up on my browser here. Uh, this is my RinkB test account. You know, I've sent some transactions before, and these are, these. some of them, these have succeeded. Um, these send transactions where people were asking me for testnet ETH. Some of these have failed, you know, where I tried to buy an NFT, and, or I tried to make an NFT, and then there wasn't enough gas or something like that. Um, it's, uh, it's not very clear directly in the MetaMask UI. But with the steps I'm going to show you in this video, you can get more visibility on these things. So uh, let's get into it, okay? Um, uh, the other thing is, uh, besides MetaMask, is node providers. What is a node provider? There's a great article, I'm gonna link it in the video description, that uh, one of my teammates here at Alchemy has uh, written, um, Derek, he's an awesome engineer, content creator, uh, blogger, and he wrote this really good primer on what a blockchain node provider is. And I'm not gonna go super deep into it. The TLDR is that when you are sending transactions to the blockchain, for example, through MetaMask, MetaMask has to talk to the nodes of the blockchain, the computers that are running the blockchain. And if it doesn't have a way to talk to those nodes, then it doesn't have a way to broadcast your transactions. So a node provider, um, which is something that Alchemy does provide, and there are other um, services that do this, uh, they basically provide access to, to the blockchain network. So anyways, that's what that is, and you can look at more into that if you're curious. Um, so that's all the context you pretty much need. So let's just jump into like, how do you actually set it up, okay? So the first thing is uh, it's really useful to have an Alchemy account. You can do so much with this, but for you know our custom RPC endpoint that we're setting up, we gotta have an Alchemy account. So you can just click directly into here and uh, click get started for free or click login if you already have an account. Um, so I already have an account, I'm just gonna sign in. And you can see here are some apps that I've previously created, but if you're brand new, then you'll have nothing here. And all you have to do is click create app and then you can call it whatever you want. So you might say, um, this is my Polygon MetaMask um, app or something. And I think MetaMask has a capital M. Um, uh, and then for the description, you put whatever you want. I, I use this app to track my MetaMask transactions on Polygon. And then for environment, this is really for your internal bookkeeping purposes. So you don't really need to change this. Uh, I mean, you can change it to whatever you want, but let's say I'm, I'm using mainnet. So I'm just gonna call it production because it's like real data. And then chain is Polygon and the network is Polygon mainnet. We also support Polygon Mumbai. And um, just as a heads up, we support, like if you wanna do, uh, if you wanna create like a custom RPC endpoint for your MetaMask for any of these chains, we support Ethereum, Arbitrum, uh, Polygon and Optimism and all the test nets. So cool, create an app and then boom, you see that at the bottom here. And then we're gonna click into view details that'll bring us into the app page for this app. And the key thing here is we want to, um, the key thing here is we want to view the key. <laughs> so I'll show this to you, uh, but in general, don't show this to people. People will like, uh, you know, use your endpoint um, and it'll, it'll mess up all your metrics and everything. So anyways, I'll show it to you. This is what it looks like. Um, this is the thing that we want to put into our um, configuration, okay? So I should probably show you that right now before we go any further. What we're trying to do is set up this, um, these networks you see here when we click on this. Uh, you see it, all these options that you can pick for MetaMask to connect to whichever network that you're trying to communicate with. So for example, if you're buying um, you know, Polygon NFTs, you need to have a Polygon endpoint. 
If you are interacting with DeFi on Ethereum, you should be operating on the Ethereum mainnet and your assets are different on each chain. And then if you're testing, then you're, you're on the Robston test network or the, the Coven test network or the Rinkby test network, so on and so forth. So by default, the, the problem here, let me highlight this uh, real quick because I didn't do this in the beginning. The problem is that um, sometimes the default node provider that MetaMask uses for these chains is not good enough for your purposes because that default node provider is shared across every single person who uses MetaMask. And so, you know, you're not really special. I'm sorry to break it to you, but it's shared resource. So sometimes it could be slower. Sometimes the data could be out of date. In general, it's pretty good. You know, it's operated pretty fine for me. But if you want it to be even better, that's what we're talking about in this video. So how do we do it? We go down to custom RPC and uh, this is the, all the information that we have to fill out. These, these top three fields, network name, uh, new RPC URL, chain ID, and currency symbol. These are the, oh, sorry, not currency symbol. These three are the mandatory ones. And then if you wanna make it like look nice and also be able to link out to a blockchain explorer, then you wanna fill out uh, these two. And by look nice, I just mean show the correct currency symbol for that chain. So whether it's ETH or Matic or maybe some other chain. Cool, so the network name, uh, this could be whatever you want. We'll call it, since we're doing Polygon, we'll call it Polygon, uh, let's call it Alchemy, Polygon Mainnet. And then for the new RPC URL, that's what we want here. And uh, this is really annoying with the MetaMask UI because I think it's gonna clear the whole thing when I come back, yep. Okay, so let me let me just uh, get, prepare all the information all at once first. Um, if we go down here, this actually is the example I go through in the doc, so I'll link this doc in the video too. Um, so right here, it's actually gonna look like this. So Alchemy Polygon mainnet with my RPC URL endpoint and then with a, the 137 chain ID. So in this document, and I'll put this in the video description too, I'll just copy and paste it in there for, for your convenience. Um, there are different chain IDs that MetaMask uses. It's just kind of standardized across all the nodes. Um, they just know that if we're on chain ID 137, then it's Polygon mainnet. If we're on chain ID 42, then it's Coven testnet. You get the idea. So we're gonna need 137 and then we're gonna need um, uh, these are the optional fields, but we'll just use it. We'll need the Matic currency symbol, and then we'll need the Polygon Scan Blockchain URL, uh, Explorer URL. Okay, so let's open that up again. We're gonna do custom RPC. We're gonna do Alchemy Polygon Mainnet. Um, and then we have our RPC URL that I copied over. And then we have the chain ID, which is 137. And then you'll get, you might get this red uh, warning text. It's not an error. It's just a, like a reminder that, hey, um, we are already using, we already give you like a network option that is using this chain ID. So just be aware that you're adding another one with the same chain ID. You can ignore this because, you know, you might want to have multiple providers and, um, yeah. So currency symbol is Matic blockchain explorer URL, uh, which is again, optional, but we're going to put it here. So it'll be HTTPS polygon scan.com. And ideally you copy and paste it over from like another window or something, but I'm just afraid if I click out of my MetaMask, it'll, it'll go away. So we're gonna hit save and then boom, we are now on the Alchemy Polygon mainnet. The currency symbol is Matic and you can see the, the icon that the chain ID automatically fetches. I believe this might be fetched from the Polygon scan website or something like that, I'm not too sure. But anyways, there you go. And if I had Matic in this account, then I would be able to see it. Um, I believe I have some in my legit account actually. So yeah, I have some Matic here. I have some wrapped ether, whatever. And you can see this one actually is, uh, I had previously set this up to be connected to the Alchemy RPC. So what's cool is once you send uh, transactions here, like for example, I'm, I'm buying an Avigachi or I'm buying an NFT or whatever it is, it will actually show up on your dashboard here. So you, if you wanted to, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, you can see here, this is like already uh, tracking some requests because I'm doing the setup. MetaMask is actually making some requests to Alchemy. Uh, to, the, to the Polygon network through Alchemy. And so you can see things like, okay, cool. Uh, what block number are we on? And um, you know, what are, what's the balance in my current wallet and things like that. Um, and in my test account, you saw earlier, let me go back to my test account here. Do, 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 do. Test account, uh, there's zero Matic, right? And so that's why this is uh, zero the whole time. So yeah, you can track these requests. This is like some really basic information, but it gives you visibility, which is really important, especially if you um, you know want to debug like invalid requests, like why are some requests not going through? Uh, we have an explorer. And if I filter down to my app, let's see, 
We're gonna filter down down just to the Polygon MetaMask app because that's the only one we care about. You can see all of these are uh, green checks, so there's no errors here. But if there were errors, you can see what the error were the errors are. And then in the mempool, this is something that's crucial as well. If you have pending transactions, you, we actually have a filter right here. So you can click into the pending uh, tab, excuse me. You can click into the pending tab and you can see how long has this transaction been broadcasting for and how long, uh, you know, all, all the information about the transaction. So what block number is it supposed to be go going into? Uh, who is sending it? Who is it going to? Is it me sending it to someone else? Is someone else sending it to me? Um, how long has it been in the mempool? This is pretty crucial for debugging. If you see a transaction that's been in there for 30 minutes to an hour, then hey, maybe like, maybe it's just being slow or maybe you didn't put enough gas fees or something like that. So this is all really useful information for you to debug with. And then especially as a developer, if you're building your own um, blockchain you know, application, then this is something you also really want to see. So cool. Hopefully this was useful to everybody. Um, and uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on Twitter. We're at Alchemy Platform. Um, you can also reach out to me directly. I'm that guy in tech. Uh, and you can also hop into our Discord where we have a really great community. People help each other out. And I'm in there all the time, whenever I have time. So yeah, we love working with you. We love helping people out. Uh, and we really hope that everybody can be building on Web3 and uh, help accelerate the, the beautiful future of blockchain. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next video.